currently a Libertarian Party candidate for the Virginia House of Delegates in the 53rd District. Please welcome Anthony. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, I, wanted to w I want to wish you all a uh, happy uh, Independence Day. Um, I would like to echo some of the comments said by previous speakers um, in regards to where do we go from here. Really, it's the repeal of the Patriot Act and the NDAA, as well as any legislation such as the Protect America Act that has infringed on our Fourth Amendment rights. As a state legislator in Virginia, I will push to uh, restore the Fourth Amendment in my state, um, and hope I hope to build a national coalition through the Restore the Fourth uh, organization to spread this message of liberty across the United States. Sorry. Maybe I need to be closer to this. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that said, I'm going to go ahead and just get into uh, some of my prepared remarks. Um, basically, my speech goes over how we've gotten into this situation and debunks a lot of what has been said by the, na uh, by the National Security Organization. So, on September 11, 2001, our nation suffered the deadliest attacks on this country since Pearl Harbor. Immediately following the attack, immediately following the attack, a sense of national unity and patriotism marched toward, march our country towards war in order to bring those responsible to justice and prevent future attacks. In this period of national unity, the government was granted sweeping new powers to intercept, uh, in, to intercept electronic communications, financial transactions, and expanded law enforcement powers. Thank you. The prevailing wisdom of Washington believed that sweeping powers would allow law enforcement to disrupt ongoing plots and prevent the, the 2,978th victim. Unfortunately, these sweeping powers reaffirmed in 2011 at the request of the Obama administration eased the standard from a reasonable suspicion, as required by the Fourth Amendment, to an unconstitutional standard based on relevance. This change in operational standard res resulted in the development of the prison program after the Protect America Act was signed into law in 2007 by George W. Bush. The prison program has supposedly prevented 50 terrorist attacks according to James Clapper, the Director of National Intelligence. <laughs> Furthermore, Mr. Clapper claimed that the program does not collect any type of data on American citizens. Let me repeat that. The program does not collect any type of data on American citizens. He lies! This statement has now proven to be a false testimony, and Mr. Cl Clapper has attempted to walk back his statement, saying it was a, how long have you been beating your wife question, asked by Senator Wyden. <clears throat> Since Mr. Clapper has proven to be untrustworthy, it casts doubt upon, this, it casts doubt upon his statement regarding the merits of the program. And to clarify, basically I'm going to debunk the whole idea that we're safer because of these programs. Since September 11th, 2001, the following attacks succeeded or were foiled, but not a result of the prison program. December 12, 2001, Jewish Defense League plot to bomb the Muslim Public Affairs Office in Los Angeles and attempted assassination of Daryl Issa. December 22, 2001, Richard Reed attempts to blow up American Airlines Flight 63 using explosives packed in his shoes. May 2002, college student Luke Helder plants pipe bombs in five states, injuring six people, four of which were postal workers. July 4, 2002, Egyptian gunman opened fire, opens fire at Los Angeles International Airport, killing two Israelis. October 2002, and this one hits close to home, 10 people are killed in the Beltway sniper attacks. October 2005, Bomber kills himself in a botched attempt to kill as many people as possible during a football game at the University of Oklahoma. March 2008, bombing of, bombing of an empty military recruiting station in Times Square. May 2009, small explosive device found outside of Starbucks in New York City destroys the bench it was placed on. June 2009, man, open fi man opens fire on U.S. military recruiting 
uh, office, killing one and injuring another. November 5th, 2009, mm -hmm. Major Hassan kills 13 and wounds 30 at Fort Hood in Keeling, Texas. December 25th, 2009, man lights himself on fire in an attempt to detonate an explosive in his underwear on a plane bound for Detroit. January 2011, Tucson, Arizona, six people are killed, 14 injured when a gunman attempts to assassinate U.S. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. And finally, April 2013, five killed, 264 injured when two brothers detonate IEDs during the Boston Marathon. Now this, this list isn't comprehensive and it doesn't include terrorist, terror attacks committed against diplomatic combat, compounds such as Benghazi or Egypt. Uh, it doesn't include missions or overseas U.S. personnel that were stationed in the Green Zone and were killed by car bombs. But regardless of these omissions, the, the list is still exhaustive and leads one to question. What is it we are gaining by giving up our Fourth Amendment? <laughs> Counting these 21 attacks, in addition to other international incidents not calculated, it appears that the program is an abject failure. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly enough, it also appears a majority of these case, in a majority of these cases, the suspects had foreign connections or produced reasonable suspicion, which would have allowed the FISA court to provide a warrant to tap into these people information, people's information as required by the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Instead, we have a massive program with so much data, our government has dropped the ball and is putting us in danger. This leads me to ask, are we truly gaining security in exchange for liberty, or have we exchanged liberty for the illusion of security? Is frisking grandma and subjecting young children to pat-downs before getting on a plane really making our country a safer place? No. And lastly, is the recording of all of our phone calls really preventing another 9-11, or are they merely providing cheap entertainment for NSA employees yeah. to enjoy our intimate conversations? Yeah. These questions are purely rhetorical, as we all know the answer to them, or we wouldn't be gathered here today. It's time to drop the charade and rein in these unconstitutional programs that do very little protect us from terrorist attacks and only further to entrench the surveillance state. We do not need a program that is subject to abuse and allows the government to enjoy the pillow talk that goes on between our brave military members overseas and their partners back at home. Nor do we need a program that uses unconstitutional backdoor protocols to collect information via Facebook, Twitter, cellular, or email data. If this program truly saves lives it is, and is not an abject failure, as they are claiming, the government should have nothing to hide. I am calling upon the government to declassify the program so Americans can make an informed decision in the voting booth and on the streets. Thank you and Godspeed.